in principle, in understanding, yes, we can say we follow hadith, we are ahl hadith, right? We follow, we love the salaf, we follow the salaf. In, like in understanding, yes, we are all salafi. No, we're not all salafi, that's not true. That's not true, the tabligis, they're not salafi. Okay, listen, no, no, listen, again. If you're going to be sincere, alhamdulillah, I'll discuss with you until the lights go off. Now I'm saying, if you're going to accept the truth, we can sit here until the lights go off. But if we're going to defend falsehood, then it's no benefit. Tablighi, Zahi, you know the book Fadail al I'm not here to talk. No, no, Akhi, answer the question. See, look, now, now, now you, listen, answer the question. Do you know the book Fadail al I, I heard, I, I heard about it. Okay, you heard about it. In that book, it has bid'ah, innovation, Okay. In that book, it has a hadith which aligns upon the Prophet wasallam. No, I'm telling you. No, okay, you don't know. Alhamdulillah, the scholars know and we know. I've seen them. So, Alhamdulillah, you don't know, we know. The one who knows is a proof against the one who doesn't. You, for example, you don't know many things, but there are people that know. Doesn't negate that they exist. Tabligh is not Salafi, Zakhi. They have graves in the masjid. This is not Salafiyyah. The graves in some of the masajid. Some of them, they go to the grave and they make dua to the dead. This is not Salafiyyah. Don't say that they're on the way of the Salaf. That's deception. You're not being truthful. Akhi, the truth is our goal, regardless of who it is with. Right? Now you're starting to defend people in falsehood. Uh, do you know Tabligis? Are they claim that they love the Salaf? Yes, everyone claims to love the Salaf. But anyone who has a grave in the masjid doesn't follow the Salaf. Anyone who calls upon the dead, he doesn't call, uh, follow the Quran. He doesn't follow the Sunnah. He doesn't follow the way of the Salaf. Allah said in the Quran, قَالَ رَبُّكُمْ ادْعُونِ أَسْتَجِبْ لَكُمْ إِنَّ الَّذِينَ يَسْتَكْبِرُونَ عَنِ عِبَادَةِ سَيَدْخُلُونَ جَهَنَّمَ دَاخِرِينَ Allah said, call upon me. The Prophet ﷺ said, الدُّعَا هُوَ الْعِبَادَةِ Dua, it is worship. You have from the tablighis, they call upon the dead. And they do not correct that amongst them. Because they say, if you correct it, you're going to cause differing. So I've, I've met tablighis like that. It's in their books and it's documented. And the scholars, alhamdulillah, you said you're not a scholar. The scholars who are more knowledgeable than you, and the people that know have criticized these things. See, this is the problem. You're objecting to the word usage of the word Salaf. We're just saying the Tablighis, they love the Salaf. They don't, they don't follow the Salaf. So at the end of the day, Akhi, me, if you bring me a mistake, I'll accept it. If you say it goes against this ayah, this hadith, this understanding of the Sahaba, upon the Ra's and the Ain, because my allegiance is to the truth, to the Quran, to the Sunnah of the Prophet wasallam. Those who are Tablighis, their allegiance is to their group. To the extent that in their book there is fabricated a hadith. And I can show it to you. What, lying upon the Prophet ﷺ, is it allowed? No, no, a simple question. Yes or no? Okay, so listen, no. I'm not You sound like one, brother, just to be honest. You're saying they love to, you say they love the Salaf. No, it's not allegation. I'm going upon your words. Like you say, like Tablighis, they have graves in their masjid. Yes. I can show you. You want me to show you? Okay, listen. Okay, it's fadl. As far as I know, the tabligis, they are very, very strict about not going to place of, you know, grave when they are, like, you know, have, like, you know. Not correct. Their founder. Who was their founder of tabligh? Who was the mu'assis? Yes. He was a Sufi. He used to go to the graves. He was the founder of tabligh. Akhi, see? Look, alhamdulillah. Akhi, speak the truth. Akhi, la tudafi anil batil. His own words. No, firstly, again. If I show you where, where, where he said it, or the people that were with him, they affirmed it, would you accept it? Shit. Look, subhanallah, look, <laughs> clear as the sun. <laughs> Akhi, look, Akhi, barakallahu feekum. Inshallah, I will sit with you, and I will show you the proof. Muhammad Ilyas was a Sufi by his own acknowledgement. He used to go to the graves and sit at the grave, Akhi, and say, and say the Sufi awrad. So I'll show it to you. This is the problem. Our allegiance is not to the truth. That's the problem. When people talk about division, the division is because a people's allegiance is to personalities. Alhamdulillah. Tabligh is a clearly upon misguidance. I said, Akhi, where's your allegiance? To the Prophet or Tabligh? I said to you, Fadal al-A'mal. You said you know the book. In that book is fabricated a hadith. The scholars have clarified it to Tabligh. Right? They've shown them. They still didn't change the book. The Prophet ﷺ said, Man النار, Whoever lies upon me intentionally, then let him take his seat in the hellfire. If, you, if I show you this book and they, and they haven't changed it, and they still include in that book, lies upon the Prophet ﷺ, innovations, corrupt beliefs, 
Will you then say that they're wrong and they're not upon the way of the Salaf? It's a simple question. Don't go left, don't go right. If I establish that for you, will you say that tabligh is not upon the way of the Salaf? La hawla wa la quwwata illa billah. Look, see? No, Akhi, it's a simple question. I said, if I give you, you're playing games, Akhi, love what they run. You are a blind follower because you're blind following people that have told you misinformation because I'm establishing for you things that are mentioned in the books of the tabligis. So that's not blind following. Anyone who wants to defend falsehood, they always say, I'm not a blind follower. But in reality, you're a blind follower because blind following is ittiba'u qawlil ghayr bi ghayri hujja. You follow the statement of someone without any proof. You're following and defending someone and you don't even know what you're talking about. I just asked you, it's a simple question, yes or no. If I show you in Fadail al A'mal, there's no taqlee because we're going to have the book. Is that clear to everybody? Is it a bit confusing? Fathi ma'roof? Mafum? Naam, tayyib. So if I bring you the book, so there's no taqlee, I bring you Fadail al A'mal. If you come back next week, these, these occasions happen and the person disappears, right? If you're sincere, you come back next week. I will get a copy of Fadail al A'mal. I will show you the innovations, the bid'ah. I will show you the khurafat, the false beliefs that go against Quran and Sunnah. I will show you the fabricated ahadith, right? When you see it, don't say taqlid because you're going to see the book, right? What language do you speak? Because you may say, I don't understand it. English? So at the end of the day, once I show you that, will you say, because we, we don't have to waste each other's time, right? When I show you that, will you say that tabliq is not upon the way of the salaf, rather they're upon a way of innovation? Will you say that? No, Akhi, I just said to you, I'm going to show it from their book. Okay, inshallah, come back, inshallah. Next week, we will have Fadail al A'mal. What's your name, Akhi? Ismail. Ismail. So, Ismail, you have witnesses here, 700 people listening online, that you said, inshallah, that you're going to come back. The believer, they honor their word. So, inshallah, I will get a copy of Fadail al A'mal. Please, if you're not going to come back, don't waste my time because I don't have the book, it's full of bid'ah. But I will get a copy, inshallah. I will take my time, I will highlight the errors. And we will sit through it if you're going to come back. If not, then khalas, don't waste my time. If you just want to defend, you know, tabliq, are you going to come back? No, I mean, yes, inshallah, or what? Okay, tahqiq, not ta'liq, right? Allah yabarak fikum. Yes, tabliq, barakallah fikum. Tabliq are a misguided group. The ulama of Islam, they said Sufiya Asriya. They're the Sufis of this time. The ulama. They have criticized them based upon their books. There was a sheikh, Pakistani sheikh. He, was, he lived in Philadelphia, Sheikh Muhammad Aslam, Pakistani. He wrote a book criticizing them. He used to be with them. He was with them and he criticized them for their innovations and their misguidance. Sheikh Tuwajiri has a book, Al-Qawl al barik Fi Jama'at al tabligh These things are documented with proofs and evidences for the one who is sincere. Barakallahu feekum. So, alhamdulillah. Ismail, Zallah khair, inshallah is going to come back, inshallah, and we'll show him, and then inshallah he will denounce the way of the tabligis, inshallah, and yaqbal tariq tahli sunnah bi'idnillah, and accept the way of the people of the sunnah. This is the haqq. This is what we want from all of the Muslims. This is what we want. Hadha alladhi nad'u ilayhi. We don't call no one to taqlid. We do not call anyone to taqlid. We call people to follow Quran, sunnah, with the understanding of sahaba. If someone makes a mistake, we say it's a mistake. Whether it's us, whether it's those who are close to us, whether it's those who are far from us. Whether they're our cousins, whether they're our relatives, whether they're our friends or other than that. That is what we invite people to. And alhamdulillah, if the Muslims had this mentality, there wouldn't be no division. Because it's clear. Tabligh, they said such and such. This is in Fadail al-A'mal. They haven't taken it out of their book. That's wrong. They need to fear Allah. If they don't retract their bid'ah, if they don't remove those lies upon the Prophet, Prophet ﷺ, we warn against them because they've opposed the principles of Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah. Simple. We move on to the next thing. This should be the approach of the Muslim in everything. Then we would have no differing. But we see why differing arises. Why? Because a person be like, no, that's my Sheikh. No, how can you say that about my Sheikh? Are you sure? You're blind following. Even though the Sheikh is on a video. It's clear as the sun in the sky. Or it's, it's something that he said and it's recorded. Or something that he wrote in his book. You can't get clearer than that, Ikhwan. 
As for the innovations of tablir, it's clear as uh, alhamdulillah, the brother mentioned them. It's one of the most easiest issues, alhamdulillah. Again, we see this discourse, the Salafi, we don't have any ta'asub. The difference between the Salafi and the person who belongs to Tablir or Ikhwan or any of those other groups, if you said to the Salafi, Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah, he made a mistake. We say, Tayyib, khalas, show me the book, it's a mistake. Khalas, intaha. Al-Albani, he made a mistake when he said such and such. You bring the book, he said, Al-Albani, he made a mistake. Khalas, intaha. Shaykh Muqbil, he made a mistake. You bring the book. Sheikh Muqbil, yeah, he said such and such, Sheikh Muqbil made a mistake. Intaha. The problem is, you see with these groups and these parties like Tablir and Ikhwan, the people, they won't accept their errors. And that's why they remain upon bid'ah. The graves in some masajid, we're not saying all the masajid. The graves in some of the masajid. I told the brothers before, Wallahi, me, I've had an experience with a Tablighi. Uh, in the UK, I was in a masjid and they were Brelwis. I didn't know they were Brelwis. I, I, was, I was working, and I went to the masjid to pray Jummah. It was Jummah. I was outside of my city. So in the khutbah, I heard the imam. He was saying, Ya Rasulullah. You know Brelwis, right? Yeah. You, 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 you know that calling upon the Prophet, Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam shirk, right? Calling upon the Prophet, making dua to the Prophet is shirk. You accept that, right? Yes, Exactly. So I was in the masjid, and I heard the, the khatib, he said, Ya Rasulullah. So I'm like, subhanallah, where am I? So, and then there was tablighis there. I approached the tablighis, I said, Akhi, you speak his language. I don't speak Urdu. Explain to him that calling upon other than Allah is shirk. Tell him that dua l'ghayrillah is shirk. And even on the wall they had written, Ya Rasulullah, when I saw it later on. Oh, Messenger of Allah, because they're Brelwis. They call upon the Prophet Sallallahu Allah. The Tablighi said to me, he said, Akhi, we can't talk about that. It's going to cause fitna. Ya Akhi, ayyu fitna a'adha min hadhi. What fitna is greater than shirk? Why? Because their principles, they don't talk about al-amr bit tawheed wa nahi anil shirk. La ilaha illallah. Do you know how the Tablighi is explained? La ilaha illallah. Okay, but I'm, okay, let me ask you just a simple question. How do you explain La ilaha illallah? What's the meaning? Yeah, but what does it mean? Yes, no, the meaning of the whole statement. The meaning of the statement. La ma'abud bi haqqin illallah. Yes, there's none worthy of worship except Allah. That's the meaning. Tabliris, they don't explain it like that from their books. They only focus upon la khaliqa illallah. There's no creator except Allah. That's how they explain it. And it leads them to an error. Rububiyyah, the mushrikun of Quraysh, they accepted that. man khalaqa samawati wal ard. If you were to ask them who created the heavens and the earth, the polytheists, the mushrikun, they would say to you Allah. The mushrikun, they used to believe in rububiyyah. Allah is the Lord, the Creator. But they made shirk in their worship. It's clear, right? Tabliq is that they focus only on rububiyyah. That's in their books. So when I said to him, Akhi, explain to him, he said, no, it's going to cause fitna. Akhi, that's not, what da'wah is that? That's not the da'wah of the Quran. That's not the da'wah of the Anbiya. That's not the da'wah of the Sahaba. The da'wah, Tawheed is what? وَلَقَدْ بَعَثْنَا فِي كُلِّ أُمَّةٍ رَسُولًا أَنْ نِعْبُدُ اللَّهَ وَجْتَنِي بالطاغوت. To every nation we send a messenger commanding them to worship Allah and stay away from false deities, taghut. The tabligh said, oh, he's going to cause fitna. That's their da'wah. It's incorrect. Barakallahu feekum. Not only is it incorrect, not saying that they don't have some good. They, they have good, but we're talking about their errors and their mistakes because now we're speaking about you know, the correctness of the methodology or the errors of the methodology. So that's because of the principles that their da'wah was built upon. And add to that, the group Jama'at Tabligh, do you know why they were, how they were formed, where the idea came from? I'm asking you, do you know? Exactly, he had a dream, Ahsant. Again, he explained the Qur'an through a dream, which is layah Jews. Qur'an is explained by the Qur'an, Qur'an is explained by the Sunnah, 
Quran is explained by the aqwal of the Sahaba, the statements of the companions, then the tabi'een. Now, and lastly, the language. Not dreams. Dreams is the way of the Sufis. We don't explain the Quran based on a dream. That's the way of the Sufis. Everyone has dreams. We don't wake up with a new tafsir. Brother, come to you. You know, I got a tafsir. Nobody beat me to it. Uh, it's reality. That's the haq. That's not ilm. And again, ikhwan, we say this not to be you know, funny, but it's factual. Again, our allegiance lies with the truth. I say to you, alhamdulillah, if all of our allegiance is for the truth, let's leave personalities, groups, or anything to the side. If the haq is the haq, we're with it. If it's a mistake, we have to be against it. If we have this mentality, the Muslims will unite. That which has divided us is allegiances to groups and parties. And we've seen it. Allegiances to groups and parties. The group is wrong. You see, the, the, they say Allah is everywhere. You give them ayat, ahadith, Imam Ahmad, Imam Malik, Shafi'i. They say, but my sheikh, he said. Wal'iyadu billah. Likewise, you, you say to them, Allah is really athbata li nafsihi sifat. Allah affirmed for himself attributes. They say, we don't believe in this. It don't mean that. That's where the disunity comes from. So again, even just in this example, which is beneficial, the discourse is beneficial. Why? It teaches us a lesson. The lesson is what? In order for the Muslims to unite, as the brother, he mentioned the ayah, وَأَتَصِّمُوا بِحَبْلِ اللَّهِ جَمِيعًا وَلَا تَفَرَّقُوا Hold on to the rope of Allah and do not be divided. The brother mentioned the ayah. But the rope of Allah is what? The rope of Allah is وَحْيُ اللَّهِ أَلَّذِي أَنزَلَهُ إِلَى الرَّسُولِهِ صلى الله عليه وسلم. It is the revelation Allah revealed to the Prophet. So until we all hold on to the revelation and we accept the truth and we reject mistakes, we're going to remain divided. Regardless of what we call ourselves. Regardless. Whatever names you use. Ismail, next week I'm looking for you, inshallah. I'm going to order now Fadal al-A'mal. Seriously. And I don't want to order it. I don't have no need for the book. Yeah, I mean, it's a lot of paper. No, inshallah, I'll order it. It's no problem. If, if you're willing to accept the haqq, alhamdulillah, for, to show a, a Muslim brother, you know, and clarify certain errors, a few dollars is cheap. I mean, ahlan, bring a tablighi scholar. I, I, I can almost guarantee you that he wouldn't come, but I'll, inshallah, bring them. We've discussed with the elders from amongst them, alhamdulillah. We've discussed, let, let me tell you something, Ismail. I've discussed with the Arabs that go with them. I've, and, they, and I've discussed with the Pakistanis that go with them. But all of their hujjaj is weak. You cannot justify lying upon the Prophet ﷺ. If I give you a book with fabricated ahadith, and the scholars have pointed it out for decades, and you still print the same book, and you still rely upon the same book, there's no excuse for that. No excuse, brother. You can bring the biggest scholar in the dunya. There's no justification for that. I mean, but you've defended them, which is, you've defended. That's wrong, brother, because look, even that. Okay, okay, yeah, but that, let me explain to you, Ismail, that's wrong. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, again, that mentality is wrong. That mentality, I defend everyone or every Muslim is wrong. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Unsur akhaka zaliman aw madhluma. Aid your brother, whether he's the oppressor or the oppressed. They said, as for the one who's being oppressed, we understand that. What about the oppressor? He said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, you stop them from their oppression. So if the Muslim is wrong, we don't defend them. We don't defend them. We, we say that they're wrong. If a Muslim goes out and kills people, we say he's wrong. If a Muslim is in the street drinking alcohol, and we see them drinking alcohol, we say he's wrong. If a Muslim justifies terrorism, we say he's wrong. So if a Muslim is upon bid'ah, we say he's wrong. We don't defend Muslims when they're wrong. And that's in the Quran. Allah said in the Quran, وَلَا يَجْرِمَنَّكُمْ شَنَآنُ قَوْمٍ Do not let the dislike of a people cause you to be unjust. اِعْدِلُوا هُوَ أَقْرَبُ لِلتَّقْوَى Be just because it is closer to piety. Even the non-Muslim. If the non-Muslim, he says truth, we say that's truth. If he says something wrong, it's wrong. So we don't aid someone when they're wrong. That's the mistake that you made. And if you don't know, alhamdulillah, then it's upon you to ask. Barakallahu feekum. And... This thing about I listen to everyone, that's wrong as well. Because 
Again, alhamdulillah, Sahih Muslim. You know Sahih Muslim, right? Now I'm just asking, I don't, because I don't know your level. It's not to, you know, to, to like degrade you or anything. I'm assuming you know it. But in the introduction of Muslim, read the muqaddimah of Sahih Muslim. The introduction to Sahih Muslim. He has in it a chapter about whose narrations and who we take knowledge from. What he said, he mentioned the narration of Muhammad ibn Sirin. Muhammad ibn Sirin was from the imams of the religion. Imam Muslim mentioned this in his introduction on how knowledge is sought. He said, This knowledge is your religion. Look where you take your religion from. We don't listen to anyone. Rather, we listen to those who are trustworthy and people who are upon sunnah. The Prophet wasallam he said in a hadith, some of the scholars declared to be Hassan li ghayri, he sound due to supporting narrations. Yahmilu hadil ilm in kulli khalaf in udulu. Some of them say there's a weakness in the chain. The knowledge will be carried by the trustworthy ones from every generation. So we don't just listen to anyone. We listen to people who are trustworthy and people of sunnah and tawheed. Because if somebody says, we listen to anyone, would you listen to the shaitan if he opened the book of tafsir? No, you wouldn't. So we listen to people who are people of integrity and likewise people that we know for tawheed and sunnah. Havidhukum Allah. It's like medicine. If you were to go to the doctor, you wouldn't go to a person that you know, pretends to be a doctor and he sets up his own clinic you know, in the middle of Germantown Avenue. You wouldn't go to that doctor. You wouldn't go to a dentist who says and claims to be a dentist but he never studied dentistry. You wouldn't go to a pharmacist who's never studied pharmacy. So what about your religion? Like Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah said, he said, cooks, you know, chefs, they have supervisors. Do you think that the religion doesn't have anyone overseeing who should talk and who shouldn't? So inshallah ta'ala, the more you learn, these things will be apparent. But inshallah, let's start with tabligh inshallah. Barakallahu feekum. May Allah bless you, Ismail. Havidukum Allah. And in this ikhwan as well is a lesson for everyone. You know, alhamdulillah, it's good. I commend him if he has some doubts to present it. Because that's the way that we address doubts. If I have a doubt, alhamdulillah, ask about it. It's no benefit sitting there and disagreeing. Ask about it. That's how we learn. People would ask the Prophet wasallam, what about this? And he would answer. That's the way that we learn. And through questions is one of the ways we learn. Naam. And I'm not saying I'm infallible. I don't mind him challenging me. The only thing I request from him, when it's, the truth is established, that we accept it. If the truth is there and it's in the book, Khalas, it's over. It's no, we're not now lawyers to you know, find a way out. The truth is there. And Allah made it apparent. Because the Prophet ﷺ described arrogance. He said, haq wa nas. That you look down upon the people and you reject the truth. So that's a sign of arrogance. The truth is there for you. You have to accept it. Regardless of who brings it.